And then problem number three. Uh, we'd sold the banks all his inventory, and one bank did a great job selling it to their customers, one of the big fish, Bank of Hawaii. The rest of the banks kind of like couldn't sell it. They sat on the inventory. Because if you're a bank and you have something valuable, where do you put it? In the vault. Where do customers not go? <laughs> In the vault. So they were terrible at selling boxes of software. So we loaded these banks up with inventory, and then they couldn't. They advertised and marketed in direct mail, but they just couldn't move the inventory because they didn't know how to sell software. Yeah, so we would, uh, you know, it was good for us for a while because yeah. we'd get a, Scott would sign up a bank, and the deal was uh, yeah. that, you know, they would have to put, you know, three or four units of our product in every one of their branches. And these were big statewide banks that we were doing. So we would get a big initial order uh, to load up their, their branches but it would never sell through. So, uh, so we'd get a big chunk of cash when we got that first sale, but there was never any sell through and therefore never any follow on business. For a while, this was not great, but it was okay because as long as Scott kept selling new banks, we kept getting these big chunks of cash coming in and that kept the, the company going. But uh, we realized that- Yeah, your sales force flaked out on you. Yeah, and, and you know, and, First of all, we're going to run out of states at some point. <laughs> but more importantly, we, we felt like, you know, this is clearly not working. We kept trying to replicate the one bank that had been so successful, Bank of Hawaii. Yeah. And, we, you know, what we, you know, as every bank that we would negotiate a new deal with, we would put into the contract various things that they had to do that we yeah. thought were the, the reasons that Bank of Hawaii had been so successful. And we put them into the contract and the banks would attempt to do it and they just, they couldn't, we were, we were trying to get them to commit yeah. unnatural acts. They just, banks don't sell software. Yeah. And we came to the realization that this just yeah. wasn't right. It wasn't gonna work. And once you kind of got to that point, uh, we just felt ethically we couldn't right. keep doing this. I, I couldn't go represent to the banks this would work because enough of them couldn't make it work. Mm -hmm. And I guess my learning from this that might apply in other situations is, um, but ultimately, we had to figure out how to sell the product. You can't rely on someone else to sell it for you. Yeah. You can go after a big fish, but they're good at selling what they know how to sell. They're generally not good selling something they don't, that's new. So you know, we've tried lots of times with big institutions to try to help sell stuff. We had a deal with Nokia in India four or five years ago to sell when they were the kingpin of cell phones. And they were totally incompetent at selling something that wasn't a cell phone. So I kind of learned you, you got to figure out how to sell it yourself and create the demand. You can't rely on even big, rich fish to do that. Yeah. So then we were stuck. We had 100% of our revenue coming from bank sales, and now we decided ethically we couldn't do that anymore. Right. Now, the good news, though, is, as I said, we did get some nice big orders along the way. So we had, and, and, our, and our costs had gone to, you know, we were four <laughs> employees. We had, you know, no rental furniture. We had, you know, we the furniture that we were renting, which was not expensive to begin with, we had returned. So yeah. we were, all, you know, it was all this we crap had from rent, home. And rent stuff. and utilities. So mm -hmm. our, our, our expenses were as low as they could possibly be. We were in the basement. Uh, we had a basement office space uh, in downtown Palo Alto. Uh, and so, great, you know, as, as we were coming through this, and we did launch our Apple II product, and so we, we got some sales from that. And, and Apple, uh, Apple was actually very helpful to us. Uh, they, they did some, uh, some co-marketing with us and helped get us some, a little oh, bit of oh. retail distribution oh. for our Apple II product. Yes, you know, like this. Um, so uh, at the time, we were, since we didn't have any money, we couldn't afford a hard drive for the Apple II on which... Tom was programming the Apple II version because the hard drive was 3,500 bucks and we didn't have that. A five meg hard drive was 3,500 bucks and we couldn't afford it. Apple came and visited, they saw what we were doing, they took pity on us and loaned us a hard drive. Right. Uh, so uh, the world has changed in wonderful ways. Yeah.